simulated universe has to be my favorite thing to do in Honkai Star Rail and one of the things that every free to play player should be trying to progress in because the rewards are just so great. So today I'm going to be taking my experience on my free to play account in Honkai Star Rail and telling you the methods for a couple of the floors and some of the things you should be looking forward to as well as how to obtain them in this game mode. And simulated universe has a ton of very powerful rewards for you. The main one's going to be this weekly reset that actually is going to scale up for you over time and you can get great things in here such as the immersifiers that are used inside the simulated universe for very powerful relics once you start getting into world four world five you can start getting five star relics in here with very powerful two-piece sets but on top of that you also get a lot of other rewards from just some currency maybe some bonus pulls and then the most important things the herd of bonds as well as the tracks of destiny which are going to be used to level up some very high level traces for you now as far as simulated universe goes as how do i help you beat it the first couple of worlds aren't going to be that difficult if you're trying to and it's giving you some trouble make sure that you go ahead and get the fire trailblazer first and start doing a tank down strategy and when i say tank down strategy i mean you're going to be bringing the fire character as your preservation character you're going to bring natasha as your healer and then maybe you'll even bring another preservation character like march 7th and then a dps of your choice there's a lot of ways to do a tank down strat and a lot of this is going to actually be involved with the ability tree that you pick in simulated universe so when you finally gain access to this system which is the path system you might be a little confused now when you select a path what's going to happen is you're going to gain access to something you can pick later down the road called path resonance you'll gain access to that if you haven't yet but in addition to that you're going to gain a small path buff and also the path that you pick in simulated universe increases the likelihood of you to see those abilities as bonuses when you get access to them in the game, whether it's from defeating enemies or opening up chests or going to different occurrences inside simulated universe. What we're really focused on here for this tank down strategy is the path of abundance because this path here is going to gain you access to bonus healing and use this path resonance just like you could a character's ultimate ability, which means that when enemies go to hit you back to back with their back breaking moves, you can get hit by the first one, take yourself down to half health or whatever, a third health, and then interrupt them with the path ability, heal your characters back up, and then instead of dying, you'll be at full life and they can hit you again, you'll be fine. But this also is gonna get bonuses because it increases your max health, which helps you scale better with all the different path abilities. Now on top of that, you can get resonance formations here. And one of the big ones that you're gonna be using, especially on world level five, is going to be this one which allows this path to remove debuffs from everyone in your party and then on top of that it's going to give you subduing evil as a buff which is going to consume one stack of this buff to restore hp equal to 10 percent of your max hp as well and it's also going to resist the next debuff that you get so once you're fighting somebody that has a ton of debuffs and there's a lot in simulated universe between freeze and shock and possession and all this other stuff this is going to heal you up remove a debuff from your party and then prevent another debuff so abundance has a very nice mix of offensive as well as defensive resonances and abilities you can pick up in simulated universe the abundance one is very nice because it's going to allow you to access a defensive resonance ability like we talked about prior to that but it also has some very nice offensive ones or general purpose ones as well, like this one, Becoming One Mind. This is going to allow you to provide additional healing. Anytime a character provides healing, allies other than the healed target will also gain HP equal to 30% of your outgoing healing. So this is just free healing on top of your healing. It makes single target healers like Natasha, who has a skill that can't heal the whole party. All of a sudden you're healing Natasha and someone else, and then that healing's going to your other characters. If you enhance this one, not only you're getting that bonus healing, but also you're gonna be giving an attack buff to your entire party as well, which is a nice mix of offensive and defensive abilities at the same time. But as an offensive one, we have Dewdrop here, which is going to take account of the healing that you're doing and then also charge up this little Dewdrop. If you've played Genshin Impact, think of uh, the, little, the little four piece healing set that charges the little bubble and then it explodes. Yeah, this one's gonna be doing that for your healer. So it makes the path resonance that you're using where you heal everybody, that's gonna help out. Your ultimates on your healers that heal everyone, gonna charge these up. And then if you enhance the fact it's going to increase the damage of the dewdrop, 
by another 40%. The Mudra of Blessing is going to be buffing up the Dewdrop for free because it's going to be charging them based on their max HP. And yes, these are the rare legendary ones, but even the rare like through two star ones that we have here, like this one, the Prajna Boat, when being healed by an ally, you restore an extra HP amount equal to 30% of the amount healed. This goes up to 45. This is making it so your healers, your characters, whether it's self-healing or it's your abundance character, get that much bonus healing. This is 45% if you enhance it. That's almost 50% bonus healing. And this goes back into charging your dewdrop, doing damage that way. Salvation from damnation is when your dewdrop breaks. Another chance for you to remove a debuff there, up to 100% if you enhance this one. Clear loose sight body. When your HP is full, you get 36% damage reduction. This one is absolutely massive because, well, your path resonance, we talked about it earlier, you get hit by a giant AoE ability. If your characters are at full HP, that's gonna reduce that damage, but say you're not at full HP. Boss hits you with a giant AoE, kicks you all down the half, is gonna hit you with another one, you interrupt it with the path resonance, heal your whole party back up to full, and now everyone's at full life and they have 36% damage reduction. You can cheese so many boss abilities that would probably wipe you out just because you're on the abundance path. We also have precious moonlight candlelight. This one's gonna be another attack buff. So you can give your party attack buffs when you're healing. And if you enhance it, all allies, a 50% attack buff as well. And this will stack with the other one that gives a 15% buff. So you have a nice mix of offensive and defensive utility just in a couple of these path buffs. This one here though is the aversion to suffering. And this is one of the ones that makes the tank down strat really good. You pair this one up with our dew drop and this is gonna make you do damage equal to 36 to 46% of a character's max HP. Remember the path residence is increasing your max HP. You may have some characters that can increase your party's max HP. There's gonna be some gray ones down here that are also increasing your party's max HP. And this is just free damage for everyone in your entire party. You have something like Blessing, which is just gonna give you a chance to regenerate some skill points, which is nice. Dispel Disaster is going to increase your defense whenever a character is healed. So this is gonna work very well with the Path Resonance, gonna work very well with your healer's ultimate abilities going to be very very good in that scenario we talked about before where boss is about to wreck you they hit you you heal back up with past residents you have damage reduction and since you've been healed you now have a defense buff as well making your shields from your your preservation character for bringing one along on this path even stronger there's just so many of these things that are going to show up for you that work so well together that you're going to want a few of them so you get that path resonance you have the ability to reduce damage you have the ability to live through these difficult enemy attacks and it doesn't mean you have to only pick abundance path abilities when you see them too you're going to be able to mix up some of these path abilities with some destruction abilities for more increased attack and defense when you're damaged you're gonna be able to pick up some of the hunt abilities for bonus crit chance and crit damage and speed you're gonna be able to pick up some of these abilities and preservation to increase your shields and do more damage when you're shielded but the main thing the main reason why you're going to be wanting to pick the actual abundance path itself is for that resonance ability for the free healing for the free dispels for the ability to take yourself up to full hp on a whim whenever you want block a bunch of damage that way and do that general tank down strat. Now worlds one and two are gonna be pretty simple for you without much guidance. If you just go for the tank down strat, you'll be able to beat these ones pretty easily. World three is where I think a lot of players do start having issues, especially if you're still level 40, right? We don't have good gear at that point. We don't have the best light cones. We don't have levels and traces all the way leveled up. So this one's gonna be the one that's probably the most difficult for you here. And if you go in here and look at some of the characters that we are gonna be fighting, spoiler warning, this is the one, Jepard Complete is the one that really holds a lot of players back because he's gonna have a multi-phase fight and the second phase and the third phase can do a lot of stuff to you. He's got a very hard hitting AOE attack. In the second phase, he's shielded, you can't break anything. You just kind of need to whittle down this shield. It's not like a normal shield in Honkai Star Rail. It's like a shield that has a percentage gauge and it basically absorbs all damage that you would do to him or all damage you would do to the enemies with him. And you can't you can't shield break them, you can't do anything crazy to him. And he just starts hitting you really, really hard. If you do this tank down strategy though, they're gonna be able to help out 
can survive through all of this damage. He's got a lot of ice resistance, frozen resistance, imprisonment resistance, entanglement resistance. So you could be playing an RNG game if you're trying to freeze Japard all the time. But if you do this tank down strategy, this one shouldn't be too hard for you to do. Now, if you do have some extremely fast teams that you can use on Japard, you can sort of cheese that very dangerous phase where he shielded by actually going hunt resonance and raining arrows down multiple times on him in the two of the ads that he spawns at the same time. But that's still only one out of the three phases and you're still gonna have to survive all of the raw damage you take. It requires much higher gear, it requires better light cones, better characters, better stats overall. And for the average player, I wouldn't try to do that, but you could do that if you wanna give it a go. Now, World 4 is gonna be just like the one previous, it's gonna be a multi-phase fight at the end against Farag here, and you're gonna have to withstand a lot of the damage that he's putting out. He's gonna be summoning ads for you. Traditionally, if you've fought in any of the robot guys before, you've seen kind of what this guy is going to do there as well. Additional freeze res, imprisonment res, and entanglement resistance once again. He's gonna be weak to fire as well as lightning and wind. So you're gonna to wanna to come in and try to shield break. At, if you're not trying to shield break Farag himself, someone that can shield break some of the ads that are in there he's going to be summoning the hand again for a bunch of aoe damage with the big robot arm if you fought him before in the story mode it's basically the same thing but just dialed up to 10 or 11 this time this one though i would definitely go in there the tank down strat will work for pretty much every free to play player against farag just make sure that you have the ability to break some of the enemies there and defeat them after they are broken there the other enemies are characters that you fought in before uh you're just going to want to target these guys and one big thing i don't want to call it just a tank and spank fight when you go ahead with the preservation tree but it's pretty much a tank and spank fight now the last one is going to be world five and this is the one that a lot of players have trouble with and maybe the reason why you're here and this is going to be against Stellaron hunter kafka complete and this is the big one because this is where you're really going to need a lot of ability to cleanse your team which is where that abundance path resonance is going to be amazing it's good in the other ones but it's even better here because kafka is going to have a ton of different debuffs that you need to dispel she's going to be shocking your characters a lot which is going to be additional damage sure but also every time one of your characters suffers shock damage she gets a stacking attack buff and then on top of that she's going to have the ability to crowd control your characters and take them completely out of the fight, confuse them, make people hit themselves and do worse things than that. Turn off the abilities of your characters to use their ultimates as well. So if you have just one abundance character and that's your only cleanser and you go to fight Kafka and they get crowd controlled, you're pretty much done because you can't heal anymore. You can't use the character's ultimate, it's turned off, but because you're taking Path of Abundance and you're going down, picking six, getting the cleanse, if that happens to you, you just hit the button, cleanse everyone, block the next debuff, block the shocks, make sure she doesn't scale up too hard, bring a solid DPS character, and just kind of get in there that way. It's a ton of everything, cleanses, healing, damage, you just need it all. And if you can get through it, hey, hopefully this helped. And then on top of that, hopefully you got some very nice rewards in here from the extra drops in the first time clear rewards. So get in there, do some simulated universe, check out the Herda store, get all the stuff that you want, come back, let me know how you did down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.